Hi, this is FIFO, and this is episode number two in the series for regulated assets using Stellar Soroban with smart contracts. So in this episode, we're going to cover a demonstration of the use case in action. You're going to see the smart contracts working with a user interface. So let's get into it. This demo is publicly available at oififo.com and right now we just have this dev running but the idea is to bring different devs as we move forward with the use cases and once you access it you'll be greeted by uh, a bunch of information about the use case and how everything is uh, working right now what is the current state of it the current features you have and here on the left side you have this area to interact with the contract itself you have four tabs and each tab has a different objective. The first one is to generate a bunch of demo user accounts and interact with the asset. The second one, it brings information on chain about the regulated asset contract. So these were fetched from, from the chain itself. And if you click on each one of these attributes, you're going to have a description of this attribute and what it means in the use case. So here we have the regulated asset contract. These are the, its details, the contract ID, uh, the asset controller that is connected to this contract, the asset name and asset code. Here we have the controller, which is the asset controller contract, the one that, that enforces the rules. And in this case, you can see its contract ID, you can see the regulated asset that is connected to it, it's a, a two-way connection. You can see the admin address, so who is the account that is controlling this, uh, this whole uh, use case. You can see the probation period, so how long a user has to be in probation under the rules that are enforced before they're free to transact with the asset as if it didn't have any of those regulatory measures. The quota time limit, which represents how long the quota is allocated for each transaction. The inflow limit, so how much the user can receive uh, as a, an inflow quota, so every 10 minutes the user can receive up to 7,000 units of the FIFO asset. We have the outflow limit, so how much the user can send to other accounts within these 10 minutes period, so they can receive up to 10,000 units of the FIFO asset. And the last one is a tab to interact with this contract using your freighter account. So we'll start off with the demo accounts. If you click in here, you can click on this button and generate new accounts. What it's doing right now, it is connecting to the chain, generating a dummy account, funding it with some Lumens so it can pay for the transactions, and funding it with some units of the FIFO assets. So here it's ready. Demo user number one was just created. Here it's an address you can copy if you'd like. You have the balance. It has 10,000 units of the FIFO asset, and his inflow quota and outflow quota are zeroed. So it hasn't interacted with the asset so far. But FIFO, they just, the user just received 10,000 units. Why didn't it uh, go through the inflow quota? Well, that's a good question. As of right now in this version, we didn't apply the rules to the admin itself. So we want to make sure that the admin is free to interact with their asset in any way they would like. The only people that are subject to these rules are the users. So once a transaction happens from the user perspective, then it's going to be, uh, it's going to have the rules enforced upon this transaction. And that's easily customizable. It's just an uh, arbitrary decision on how we wanted to, to code this use case. So in order to test this out, I'm going to need uh, another user. You can create up to four demo users, just so you don't flood the, the network with demo users. Also important uh, information here is that we are currently connected to FutureNet. It's possible that when you're seeing this video and accessing this, Soroban might be already out and might be running in mainnet and testnet. So you should look for some indication here in this text about which one you will be interacting with. So now I have two users. They didn't use their quotas so far. So let's just start sending some units. I'll select user number one and user number two, and I'll make a transfer. Let's transfer, let's say, uh, what is the quota limit? Um, outflow 10,000, inflow 7,000. Let's say I wanna send to 2,500 units of my FIFO asset. I'll click on send. And since these two accounts are being controlled by the application right now, 
it is going to build the transaction, sign the envelope, send, and there you go. It was instant. It was already executed. This is the currently outflow, the current outflow quota that was allocated for the demo user number one, and the inflow quota allocated for the demo user number two. What does that mean? The demo user sent 2,500 units to demo user number two. So it allocated its outflow quota because it was money leaving this account. And it allocated the inflow quota on the demo user number two because it's money arriving in this account. So if I do the opposite right now and I make user number two send some units to number one, I should be allocating outflow quota of the number two and inflow quota of the number one. So let's get let's go around and send let's say um, 1500 units of the asset. Now, as it's being transacted, we should see the outflow quota of number two. There you go, it was instant, uh, it was allocated. And as time goes by, uh, as you might remember, the quota gets allocated for a 10 minute period. So you should be able to see after a 10 minute period, these transactions releasing the quota once they expire. So each transaction is piled up individually and has its own expiration time based on the duration. So the 10 minute duration, once the first transaction reaches it, this 2500 will be released. And then a couple seconds later, the second transaction will also be released and the code will be released for, the, for both users. We can see the balances, you can play around, feel free to try out this use case. Also, uh, a neat easter egg is that if you want to send some amounts from these users to your own wallet or if you want to send from your wallet to these users, you can simply input your freighter account in here in one of these fields and you should be able to see it. But that's something we're going to cover in a separate video. Thank you for watching.